After a series of long and spirited debates where we kicked around ideas like Cards the Video Game or Sweaty Men Trapped in Rectangles, we've decided to call the next season of Supercard Season 6, and it's coming this November. Oh, I didn't see you there. I'm just reading the announcement for Season 6 of Supercard, uh, a game I've been playing for quite some time. Uh, but there's a couple interesting things coming in Season 6 that I want to kind of explore a little bit better. Um, let me just go ahead and keep reading the uh, announcement and we'll see what that is. Alongside the bump in the subtitle, we're debuting a bunch of new features that we believe have the potential to change the way you play Supercard. For starters, we're popping the hood on card systems to simplify and redesign. We're adding on top of proing, allowing you to make the strongest cards to date. And speaking of cards, we've got three new tiers coming your way on launch day. We've also got Redacted, an incredibly new, exciting new Redacted, which we think will complement play quite well. Just to give you some context on where the heads, collective heads at Supercard HQ are, we want Season 6 to be all about quadrupling down on Supercard as a hobby. That's the important part. Hobby. When you bring up hobby, that brings up a lot of stuff. Uh, let's keep running through this and uh, we'll get back to that particular part. When you play, you'll notice more dynamic content in a game world that reflects current WWE events. That is a problem they have. Uh, for example, I think with these new three tiers in Season 6, they are finally adding Bailey with the shorter hair. Uh, let's continue. Uh, last season, you saw us moving in this direction with the Velveteen Dream experience. Uh, then with our Halloween promotion, we'll keep pushing the bar except with fewer rabbit appearance frustrations, except more unique themed content dropping regularly. We also want to make sure your voice, your thoughts, and your feedback continues to be represented. That's part of why I'm doing this. I'm hoping if I make enough um, thoughtful content that maybe they move more in that direction as opposed to the kind of the... Um, kind of just flashy pack opening type stuff. Either way, let's keep going. Uh, let's see, yada yada yada. Last five years of this game couldn't have happened without you. Uh, with that, couldn't have happened without you joining us and giving us your guidance. I don't know if they've ever followed any guidance. Uh, in season six, we'll keep hoping, uh, honing and refining the game around your feedback. We hear concerns about over the limit. I don't think they did because we voiced those before the revamp and still nothing changed. Uh, we hear your opinion about what could make Giants Unleash feel tighter. How about letting us play it? Um, we got you on wait times in PvP, and we heard you about shaking the card system up and expanding teams. Season 5 was all about streamlining and restoring the game's fundamentals so you could get more competitive faster. Heck, we even rebuilt the game's network so we could do a lot more stuff server-side without interrupting your play. We'll keep building on this foundation with fresh features, fresh mechanics, and the stuff that you want. Together we're building something wildly entertaining here, we look at this new season pretty simply. We're just getting going here, ready to give you even more. See you this November. Um, that all sounds great, I guess. Um, Cat Daddy's kind of known for doing a lot of talking and not actually doing a lot of things that are going to help people in Supercard, uh, aside from putting in packs and having you pay a good amount of money for them. Um, let's go back to that hobby part, right? Uh, that's the thing that kind of interests me the most, is I have a lot of hobbies. Um, I play Magic the Gathering, and this is a deck that I don't have to use in the standard competitive tournaments. I can play it casually. Um, it's something that has kind of a universal use, as a hobby really should. You should be able to have a lot of use cases for your particular hobby. Uh, also, um, I'm a photographer. Not professionally, but you know, it's still there. It's a, it's a hobby. It's something I can do in my free time, enjoy it, you know. So I, I have a couple hobbies. What is a hobby? What do you think of when you think of a hobby? Is Supercard actually going to do that? Well, I play it a lot, right? I mean, I'm sure you probably do too. Otherwise, you wouldn't be looking for YouTube videos about it. Um, a hobby really to me is what can I do with this particular thing? You know, stuff like... Uh, Destiny has content that you can, you know, keep rerunning to get better and that sort of thing. And uh, Supercard has that very same treadmill type effect where you're leveling up cards, using the cards to level up certain decks that you use in certain modes, etc., 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 getting better pulls, that kind of thing. Um, moving up the ladder. And to that aspect, I think it kind of um, at least has a lot of trappings that a particular normal, normal hobby would. There's the collectible aspect of it, um, the improvement aspect of it. Um, the other thing is that it's always available. A hobby always has to be available. You can something you can do in your spare time, just kind of um, 
without having to put much effort into it. Now, Supercard is there. It's a mobile game, right? You can access, uh, access it on your phone, um, through an Android emulator, on your tablet, wherever, right? I'm sure you can probably get it to run on your watch if you want. Um, the one problem I have with that is... Okay, so you can see here these modes are currently unavailable. Um, that's just part of the Season 6 uh, refresh, I think. But realistically, everything's kind of on a timer, right? Oh, well, and it crashes sometimes. <laughs> Anyways, stuff is on a timer. Uh, Money in the Bank takes about an hour. Uh, the events are about 15 minutes. Sometimes PvP can go 10 minutes to 15 minutes. Um, the only thing that you can always just play is Wild. So you can always do stuff. Sometimes it's not the most exciting things, um, but there is something there. Uh, also, it kind of um, kind of depends on your level of investment, right? For photography, I have this camera and I have um, a battery, a uh, memory card, and you know, as lens lenses go, I have you know basically whatever um, I want. You know, obviously, you know, budgetary concerns notwithstanding. Uh, but I do have everything that I need to do unlimited photography. I have a processing computer that I can put photos on and edit them, that sort of thing. Um, there's really no limit to what I can do. Uh, similar with Magic the Gathering, right? Once you get a card, you can use that in multiple formats. The card never is, generally speaking, just worse than another card. Where is if you took a Beast... Um, Let's say who's one of the top tiers in Beast. A Beast Becky Lynch, right? And you get a WrestleMania 35. The WrestleMania 35 Becky Lynch is just going to be better than the Beast, like, hands down. Like, you may be able to use the Beast in certain situations to help get an advantage in matchmaking uh, to weaken your deck. But in general, a better card is just a better card, just flat out. So there's tons of old stuff that you've invested in that you just kind of lose, Right. Sure, sometimes a camera may break, you may lose a magic deck or something, but in general, once you invest in that, it's yours forever. Um, so those are kind of the things I look at and look for when getting into a hobby, um, is that kind of perpetuity, right? Like a, a lack of just kind of loss of value. Even if you're getting into something like, say, sculpting or whatever, clay is then turned into something and that something can still have an impact uh, artistically, financially, whatever, um, for a long time, um, if not till the end of your life. Um, Supercard, I, I don't know. But they say in Season 6 it's going to be more friendly to that kind of hobby idea of this game. Hopefully it's not just a, a tagline they're trying to throw on it. But let's see what comes with Season 6. There's a couple things, some interesting, some not so interesting. Um... I guess the newest thing is just there's three new tiers. That's going to be kind of obvious. Um, that's just kind of the treadmill. I don't think that's necessarily anything new. Uh, some of the art's really nice, like the Vanguard, uh, the Primal, and the Nightmare are kind of uh, gimmicky. They do kind of remind me of, uh, what is it, Beast Monster? Uh, although the Beasts look okay, but Monster is just garbage. I think in a, in a few, few tiers, we're going to think Nightmare is probably really bad. And a lot of the pictures in Primal seem kind of bland, but... Either way, there's the three new tiers. Uh, we're also getting the Performance Center, which allows you to train matches and levels in cards now. Um, kind of automatically, like in a Money in the Bank style. Uh, if you haven't seen yet, you can go look at Super Zomagog Barbecue's YouTube. You can look at Biggie Dudes. Um, they'll have a little bit better explanation because I don't have any advanced content. Um, nothing from Cat Daddy or anything like that. And obviously, I wouldn't or shouldn't at this point. Um... But they can kind of show you exactly what that is. But like I said, it's a money in the bank style. You put a card in, it'll train over a certain amount of time slowly. And then once it's done, it's all leveled up or what have you. Uh, I'm not sure if you say you put it into the match portion, which I think is the performance center. If your matches will go up concurrently while you play with it. So if you could grind it and um, have it in the performance center, that would be a good way to speed that up. Um, if it's where once you put it in and you don't, get anything for playing other games with it. I don't know if I'm going to use it that much. Um, the one case I probably will. Um, let's see. So let's go to females. Uh, let's see Bailey. So I don't have Bailey trained up, obviously. Um, maybe if I get in, in similar, because in Season 3 they're also getting rid of a lot of these, um, the, 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 uh, the matches. You know, it's just a solid 
hundred matches, I think, to to level everything up and no tokens and whatnot. But I think if you're close enough on matches, it may behoove you to let it run overnight so that way when you wake up, if you've got a mostly trained character, they'll be fully trained and then it really doesn't eat into your time and you won't have to pay for the extra performance centers, um, training or matches or what have you. Um, that's really the only way I can kind of see using the performance center is kind of like a king of the ring almost. Um, if you can't use it to get matches concurrently with king of the ring or just normal grinding and wild or something... I don't know if I'm going to use it that much. Um, that doesn't really seem to be for the grinders, for the hobbyists, unless you're a very casual hobbyist and you just want to pay to fully train your, you know, Vanguard or Primal Becky uh, or you know, whoever. Um, so that's weird. That doesn't really seem to me as like, a, unless your hobby is spending money, that doesn't really seem like kind of a hobby uh, feature to me. Um, additionally, there's fortifying. Um, fortifying is interesting because it doesn't look like it's you're going to be able to jump tiers necessarily. So if you're not entirely familiar with it, again, there's other YouTubers with a lot more video information on it. But what you basically do is you take two cards and you pro them. So you got your Becky Pro, essentially. Uh, you would then at that point have a button that says fortify, I think. Um, and then if you've got a third Becky, you could put her into your already pro, uh, a fourth Becky the same, or... If you had, say, two pros, you can combine them to basically get, like, a fortified two, I think. It is kind of additive for each kind of individual card you get. Um, it's interesting. It's interesting, but I don't know if it's... I don't know how really impactful it's going to be. Or people, people are really excited about it. I don't know how impactful it's going to be. So I think in the situation like this, where I've got the full SummerSlam 19 Road to Glory, um, if obviously in this case, if you know my next card below this, I think is a biggie, and he's only a couple points lower than Kevin Owens. If I were to combine the Shawn Michaels, they would go you know a little bit higher, and then that would bring Big E. So I wouldn't really lose much on the bottom end of my Road to Glory deck, but my mid would kind of you know bump up from the. Uh, the stat boost, which is, it almost seems like at a Fortify 1, it's maybe like a permanent momentum slot effect, like a 10% roughly. Um, I haven't done the math yet, and I'll probably do that once the season starts, just to try to get you some more information on what Fortifying actually does. Um, so yeah, I think that's interesting in those points. Um, also, like if, you know, once you start getting, uh, I guess the next tier is Nightmare, um, kind of filling out the top slots with the pros, um... Getting your regular cards fortified um, to possibly keep them keep keep pulling the back of your Road to Glory deck up um, to kind of maybe even it out a little bit as far as difficult the like where your wall might be keeping all the stats kind of similar um, that could be interesting that could be good there's some could be some strategic depth there um, are you gonna want to you know use the Seth Rollins who's one of the higher ones in the tier. Um, Versus, you know, a Kevin Owens that you could possibly get another copy of in this rotation's, you know, PvP rewards or something. You know, it, it, it add, does add another layer. Um, I would imagine a lot in Ring Dom as well. Um, last Man Standing, I don't know. I still think you want, you're want you probably going to want to be just the flat as, as possible to not get screwed. Um, but, you know, it, it, it could be something that kind of develops over time as like a real necessity. As opposed to just another... Um, component of advancing, you know, tiers. Um, anyways, that's fortifying. Uh, moving on, uh, they also mentioned they're going to have a team expansion. Um, this just seems good. 20 players per team. Uh, you can split them to get into team battlegrounds. Uh, at the moment, they are not going to be shifting the numbers on Road to Glory or uh, Ring Dom. So I think that's just going to make it more palatable to be in a team. Um, RTG for teams is a real grind sometimes. Um, I think th making just those base cards, especially now since they're going to be able to be fortified and that third and fourth copy of a particular card you get isn't always just going to be dead. So I think they're just going to try to encourage you to get as many basic pulls from those sort of things as possible. We'll see if they up like the Team Battleground rewards. I know they've always been classically terrible of like getting a tier pull for your squad. It's like maybe two out of the ten people get an actual tier pool. Um, 
but yeah, that all that all seems fine and the, there's some rumorings that there's going to be in you know, like a new team event that's going to be very impactful where you need the 20 players that sounds a lot like the marvel puzzle quest how you can get the alliances pretty um pretty big filled up with people um and i think that is something that may make this more hobbyist right um you do like your team event on monday tuesday and then you go into thursday friday and you're kind of side doing this team event of team battleground but i feel like the team battleground charging is kind of what over the limit should have been something like that either way, i think the team stuff is really interesting and and honestly just getting more people on the team and not having like a couple people bomb out and then you're screwed out of a tier you know in the rtg so i think that's just a good thing um they're saying they're gonna have more unique events um and that's like the Velveteen Dream Month, I assume, like the Taker, Batista, SmackDown Friday pool type thing. And then obviously the Fiend stuff, which those were all bad. I played religiously for that Velveteen, uh, Velveteen Dream Month, didn't get one. I played every Friday of that month, didn't get any Takers or Batistas. And obviously a lot of people had trouble with the Fiend. And it was very annoying how they communicated the rules of that particular event. Um, I don't think those uniques are, are those uniques were bad. And there was no way for people who were treating this as a hobby, who were grinders, were guaranteed to get anything. That's the one thing I kind of wish that Supercard had, is they always would have a alternate path as opposed to just RNG to getting whatever this unique event card is. Um, but again, we, we can get that. That's maybe another video. Um, they did mention that they're listening to the feedback. I don't know about that. Um, the one thing I would say is with this Fortify system... And the kind of uh, outrage may be a weird word, but um, after the pull rates from the board were reduced drastically in Season 5, um, it was just a slog a lot of the time. Hopefully, if they kind of up the pull rates, then you may be able to see more people just getting that, like, oh, I got a pull, you know, that's the, uh, the burst of endorphins. That's the thing that we want. That's why we play. That's why you play loot drop games, is for the legendary, with the fancy... Uh, light columns sticking out of it you know that's what i mean it's uh that's that's something that i i wonder if a lot of these fortification changes to the the season six cards as a result of that so they can put more cards into the in more drops into the pool and you still don't necessarily advance out of your tier quicker we don't really know how fortifications will affect a tier there's been some where you just get kind of a percentage boost i don't know if it will just like oh if you had a full fortified four or three like nightmare deck if that would put you into vanguard uh, we just don't know yet we'll we'll figure that soon um that's pretty much it for season six i'm sure there's a couple of things here or there um this is all just kind of from the news and the youtube channels um so season six is tomorrow how am i gonna approach it well i've got some stuff saved up i've got my ticket store ready to go i've got 432 i might get some tomorrow so i'm thinking maybe i'll end up at like 450 which is a good amount of packs um, I've got a fusion ready to go. Yeah, this is probably too late for other people, but if you need one of these legacy season two fusions, uh, you, those are going to be gone per super Zog Magarger burger boo. Uh, I have a couple that I'd like to get pro in WrestleMania. I'm going to see if I'm going to fire off one more, uh, before the reset maintenance tomorrow. Um, okay. So my war PVP is currently unavailable. I have about 20,000. I kind of want to see if I wonder if because they're making this fortification a thing, if they're going to make the the tier pools from packs a little bit more consistent. Um, if so, I may buy packs. Otherwise, I may just buy. Uh, I think there's going to be at least one nightmare and maybe a primal in the rewards. Who knows, right? Um, I think I might just go with the sure bet of getting a pro out of there if it's as long as it's the nightmare. Um, Additionally, money in the bank. I've got seventy-two thousand-ish contracts uh, ready to go. Um, I think I will. It will. It'll depend. I, I think maybe if I can get a Nightmare Pro early and get into Primal quickly, I might just save it for a Vanguard one. Who knows? They may have a Vanguard. I doubt they have a Vanguard one right away. But but I, I've got a lot there. Um, I've got fifty picks stored. So, you know, we'll see. I, I think I'm just going to kind of go with um, 
just kind of seeing what they get. But I'm I'm pretty well situated. Um, anyway, this is going kind of long, but I want everyone to know. Um, I'm gonna keep doing some stuff like this. I I maybe once or twice a week. Um, I want to get some more thoughtful stuff about Supercard out there. I don't know if there's necessarily an audience for that, but I feel like there is. Um, anyways, I think there's a couple things that we can take away from this. Um, as a hobby, I don't know if this is going to fly, the changes. There may be more stuff coming down the line, um, but if it's kind of this flash-in-the-pan, unique event type stuff, I, I don't know. Um, I think there's a real problem with this scheme to be considered a hobby. Like, Think about when you see a streamer, right? There are very few streamers who get any kind of traction, and it may just be because the audience is so small because it's a wrestling game. But also, like, when you are playing a, let's say, Road to Glory, right? And you're grinding Road to Glory, and the event is Road to Glory, and people want to see Road to Glory. They want to see your full deck. They want to see the, um, the, the matchups, you know what I mean? Like, oh, do I sacrifice my big guy and try to take the first game of this match or whatever? Um, and then you run out. And you can play ads, and that's fine, although it's kind of detrimental to keep running ads on a stream while people are watching, because that's usually the kind of thing that drives people away from streams, is excessive ads. But you can get ads and you can play more bouts, but eventually those run out, and then what? Just go to Wild? No one cares about Wild. Sorry. No no one does. It's not entertaining. Um, so if you think of like that, like at some point you're just going to have to wait and play every 15 minutes you know, a two-minute game. If you think about Fortnite, would that have ever caught on if once someone's out of the Battle Royale, they'd have to wait 20 minutes before they can queue into a new one? No. No, obviously not. Same with Overwatch, like, or any any kind of thing that has a big following. Um, that Like, that's how you build a community. Like, and especially in streaming, like, there's not anyone who probably gets a full sustenance or career off streaming super card. Uh, I think there's maybe even only one or two people who get more than 60 viewers. Um, and it's because it's hard. Like Once you run out, you just have to either throw money at it, which I guess some people think that's okay. But, you know, anyways, again, we're kind of getting off topic. Uh, but it does go back to the same thing with lack of a community, right? In hobbies, you need people to bounce stuff off of, right? And we don't really have that. Like, Unfortunately, the Supercard Reddit is kind of... Um, under the whims of literally one person, right? There's just nothing we can do about that. He has his particular rules, and some may agree with him, some may not, but there's no flex in those rules, right? It's his way or the highway, and you are okay with that or not. You know what I mean? Um, you know, traditionally, I guess you just go onto your own team's Discord or whatever, but that that's still, that's just like segmented little tribes in this community that where you need something big and better. And then you have a couple of YouTubers who, I don't know. There, there's, I just don't see a community there. They may have their own community, obviously, but you don't have like this big swath of people where anyone can just go and get some information, throw out ideas. And, you know, maybe that's also partly because Supercard is not an incredibly strategic game. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I think the biggest problem is it just needs a perpetually engaging mode. Um, like if if there was an OTL like for a month, you know, and Wild actually contributed to that in some meaning way. I, th I think Wild's just too boring. But if you had some perpetual thing, if you made the points higher and Road to Glory and just took away the timers, I mean, you know, maybe. Obviously, they'd need to do math on the back end and figure out how they would make money from that. But you know, I I don't know. But it, it needs something like that. Um, you know, I, in, I don't want to be ending this on a down note because I like Supercard. If you go back and look, I'll show you my catalog, my first kind of, uh, event card. And I'm not entirely sure which one it is, but I think it was either the Bray Wyatt WrestleMania season two, or maybe the single Dolph Ziggler from PCC. I don't remember. Um, but I've been playing for a while. Obviously, I fall off every now and then, as most people do. But um, I think there is something to this game. Obviously, you love wrestling. You love this game to some degree, right? Um, and it's fun collecting cards. And, you know, it's it's all built to be very kind of engaging. Um, I just think the basic core of the game 
could use some tweaking to actually get to that hobby status. And I don't know if they're actually going to address that in season six. I think they're just going to kind of build around it and hope that having one stat be higher than another bot's stat is enough to carry it. Um, but that's what this channel is going to be for, right? I'm going to be evaluating that throughout season six, hopefully the year. Um, we'll see, you know, this is interesting to me. Hopefully it's interesting to you. Uh, thanks for sticking around. This has been a lot longer than I thought it would be. Uh, and I'm not really used to this sort of thing, but, uh, I appreciate it if you did stick around. Um, if you do want more stuff like this, go ahead and hit subscribe. I don't care if you hit the bell or whatever. If you want to find my videos, I'm sure you can. I'll be doing some stuff on Twitch too, and then might, you know, bring some highlight stuff over but uh, i don't know it's all kind of a work in progress this outline is kind of a work in progress um you know we'll get there we'll get there as a community maybe this will be the hobby that i've been looking for not directly through the game but you know through streaming it to everyone else so um good luck tomorrow everyone with your pulls hopefully the maintenance isn't too long uh hopefully i'll be back with a video in about a day or so again depending on the maintenance who knows, it may be up in an hour after it goes down. It may be another 24-hour situation. Like, who really knows? Not me. Um, but good luck with all your new cards. Um, if you have any questions in the chat, <laughs> the chat. If you have any questions, go and put them in the comments. Um, I'll try to answer them, or I'll maybe include them in a video. Um, I need to stop hitting this microphone. And I need to stop talking so you guys can get out and actually start playing some games. So we'll see you in the next video.